Okay. Hey guys, welcome, welcome to our September team call. This is very exciting. Um, and I have a couple of thoughts, but I don't have a whole lot planned because we have some awesomeness coming from Tammy and Angie because they got to go to the Align Retreat in Utah uh, last week. And so they're going to share all of their fresh, amazing perspectives with us. Um, Justin will be here in a little bit and he'll share some thoughts. I did want to shout out the 22 plus, there's maybe more, <laughs> plus people that earned Leaders Retreat. So if you earn Leaders Retreat, congratulations. That is a huge, huge, huge deal. Um, this, this contest was a challenge and there was 20 plus of you that rose up to the, to the challenge. So huge, huge congrats. If you earned Leaders Retreat, you ranked up, you had a win. It doesn't even matter what, what, the, what the big goal was. Shout it out in the chat thread because I think it's really valuable to have reflection space and to not just always charge ahead and be like, oh, you know, we're go, you know, going for it. You know, that win is behind us. It's now September. I think it's really important to recognize the wins and to celebrate the goals hit. So if you hit a goal, if you had a win, if you earned it or you know of a teammate or a friend or an upline, whatever that earned it, shout them out because that is huge. Um, I know that Tammy swept the whole contest. Who else swept it? Melody. Um, there might be some more pending. If you earned prizes, shout it out. I know I'll shout out Chelsea Finley, a level one of mine. I don't know if she's on yet or not. Um, she's gold and she started in April. And she almost swept the contest. <laughs> she got that second second um, tier prize. So what was that? Seven hundred dollars cash. So, anyways, huge huge wins. Um, Jamie Tinker, she earned it. There's yeah. Shout it out in the comments. I don't want to try to go through listing everyone because I'm I'm afraid I might miss someone. So shout yourself out. Shout your teammates out. Um, let's celebrate the wins. Um, I did have a couple of thoughts that I'll share real quick, and then I'll turn it over to Angie and Tammy. Um, but I just wanted to share like regardless of August, whether it was a huge month for you or whether it was a bust and like you were sidetracked, you had school, kids, you know, vacations, whatever, or even the summer, regardless of what that all was, I feel like September is a time when we're back into routine. Um, for the past couple of years, Jessica Huffley has coined September as like hashtag September shift. And so that's kind of my theme for the month of September. It's like, okay, what do I need to shift? Where's one area of my life where I can move the needle a little bit? Because really, plexus, I mean, plexus aside, plexus is a reflection of who we are as people. Like there's so much wrapped up in like the, the health of our business, the su success of our business is really wrapped up in a lot of who we are like and, and I think you'll hear that from Tammy and Angie is it's, it goes back to what we learned about last fall in that book study you know who we are is how we lead and so the healthier we can be the more aware the more self-aware we can be in the areas where we need to create peace when we need great balance with um, maybe some areas where we need to commit to some basic things right um a couple of challenges that I have for you guys just I jotted them down really quickly is commit to September, you know, set your quota and set your goal, whatever that is. Um, I would say it commit to that. <laughs> and then the second thing is, um, re, re, sorry, I keep getting tongue twisted on this. Re write <laughs> your goals and your why, especially I've been chatting with different people and I think it's easy to kind of lose focus of our why. And if you don't have a really strong, solid why, you're gonna you're going to flounder, or you're you're not gonna commit. Or if there is a maybe an underlying subconscious fear. I was on coaching calls afternoon, and in some of in some people, like we were able to drill drill down and figure out what that subconscious fear was that's holding them back from maxing their potential in this business, or at least you know going to the next level or hitting the next goal, right? And so I would just challenge you get get out a pad of paper. And, and have some margin time this week where you can reflect. Like I've purposely not scheduled stuff this week on the team page or on the, in the team. Just like many of you are reeling from leaders retreat contests. It was a big push. You did a lot of, lot of work in August. Maybe you blitz messaged hundreds of people. And so you're still reeling from that. 
Um, and so I just want to give you permis permission to rewrite your why, reset the goals, um, really map out like maybe the things that you want to commit to shift in your in your personal life and your business and your marriage and your spiritual life whatever those things are commit to those things because it will pay off in your business it'll pay off as you invest in yourself and your your family like those are so important so um i do have a couple of practical ideas but i think i might wait until um tammy and angie are done sharing their things if it's applicable i'll share it there if not i'll pop on the team page and share a couple of practical things that i'm doing in my business so um, I'm still, I'm still uh, approving people into this call. I'm not sure why Zoom is set up this way, but we'll just roll with it. Okay, so Angie and Tammy both committed to going to the Align Retreat last week with Brooke Hemingway, if you're familiar with Brooke. She is a double diamond in plexus. I feel like she's 10 steps ahead of everyone in her business, and she had such valuable things to share, and I think she really shared out of her own story, and I am so excited for um, both Tammy and Angie to share their, um, Angie is a Emerald ambassador on my team and a longtime friend. Tammy is senior Ruby on this team and she just started about a year ago-ish, a year and a half ago. Um, and both of them have so much to offer. Um, they're great leaders and they're gonna share with us tonight the top tips and the things that they um, gleaned from the retreat. So girls, I didn't get a chance to listen to Marco Polo, so I legit don't know what we have planned, so we'll just roll with it. I'm going to just turn it over to you guys. Okay, well, what we decided is we're going to kind of popcorn back and forth if that works good, just so that we can kind of get our thoughts going. And um, I just have to say, wow, that introduction makes me so excited. It gets me pumped up even more. Um, I will just say that we had an excellent, excellent time. Um, when we were there, met so many new people, and the thing is, is that we got separated. So like Tammy and I kind of knew each other, but then we got separated when we got there. And that was Brooke's whole plan is that people need to get outside of their comfort zone and get to know more people because we were able to share and glean and just really hone in on learning from other people. There was only a time or two that Tammy and I even sat together, honestly, like we, we just branched out and met so many new people and that was amazing. Um, but I just want to tell you guys this. Everyone is probably thinking, because this is what I was thinking when I got there. What is her system? What is her secret? Like she's, she's, you know, the top in the company. She's all this, she's that. And here's this, here's her secret. She doesn't have a secret, but she is the most enthusiastic little energizer bunny that I have ever met in my life. I thought I was high energy. This girl can run circles around me. Literally, like I went to her workout class, she kicked my rear. I mean, it was cray cray the whole time. But her biggest thing is enthusiasm. You have to have an undaunting amount of enthusiasm to have a team that is willing to just buckle down and run beside you, run behind you, run in front of you, whatever it takes. And she displayed that all week long. And she did say she has a lot of boundaries and that's one of the areas I want to talk about too, but her enthusiasm and how she loves her team, how she loves, her, you know, her individual people, even down, you know, like she talked a lot about tap rooting and just different ways that you love your people and that you show them your enthusiasm. And it's not like a fake thing at all. It really is loving what you're doing every day. But when you have boundaries to portray that enthusiasm, it literally makes all the difference in the world. And I mean, she wasn't you know, she's not like doing cheerleading or anything crazy like that, but she just is pouring into her people and loving them from the top down. I mean, wouldn't you agree, Tammy? Yes, absolutely. I think that, you know, when you talked about that, her energy, it was so contagious, literally that we walked out of there. It was like, she could have been selling soap, sign me up. I want that soap. So, you know, they talked about what you want more of, you have to amplify. That's in ourselves too what we what we want more of we need to amplify in ourselves people want what we have they want the energy that we have they want the enthusiasm we have 
we're in a dark world. We are in a very dark world right now. People need mm -hmm. excitement. They need the enthusiasm. They want to know there's something greater. And I think she instilled in us that we were made for more. Yeah, we, we, were, we were made for, for, for much more than this. Um, one of the things that she had um, said, she had had a statement, it was put on the board, and it says, what if I didn't show up? And if you think about that for a minute, but what if you didn't show up in this business? What lives would have not been touched? Who may not even be here? And uh, honestly, that statement for me left me pretty much bawling for about five minutes straight. You know, my, my what if I didn't show up? I may not be alive today. Lyme patients that I've worked with may not be alive today. Alive today. So what, that's a question you need to really sit down and hash out with yourself. What if you don't show up? What if you say, you know what? I'm afraid of what somebody's going to say about me. Oh, they're going to be talking behind my back. They're going to be doing this. What if you didn't show up? What if that person that needs you today, you didn't show up today? Yeah. That was one of the big aha moments for me as well. And I'll tell you guys, we shed a lot of tears at this thing because honestly, like it wasn't a plexus conference. It was a align everything in your life conference. And that all played into our plexus business. But that is one of the statements that I was just thinking of too, Tammy, because I was thinking as some of us do off and on in our businesses, am I always going to keep doing this? What, you know, is this really what God has for me? But I wasn't looking for it. And this is what the Lord. What? Zeke. Whoops. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Back. Uh, I, I didn't realize it needed. <laughs> One of the things that the Lord made so clear to me on that statement that Tammy was just talking about is that I kind of struggle with sometimes is, should I be doing this? Is this what I'm doing? And two years before I started Plexus, I made this statement and I shared this last night on our gold mastermind call. I, I shared this because I literally said, I don't need to cultivate. I don't need any new friends. I don't need to cultivate any new relationships. I've got a big family. I'm surrounded by all, I've got all the people that I want. And not knowing that two years later, God would literally drop this business in my lap to not only my own team having a couple thousand people on it, but my Facebook friends are is huge. And then all of one team and all of Plexus and the Lord, he just reminded me of that. He's like, of course you need to be doing this because there's so many people that are counting on you because you started, because you're driving this bus. If you weren't driving this bus, all the passengers that are on your team, they wouldn't be getting the help. That And so just when you think about the, you know, sometimes we can get down about things or whatever, but when we lift ourselves up and we're just determined to be excited, to be thankful, and this is the best quote that I, and I heard this long before the, before I went to this retreat. Remember when you couldn't wait to be where you are. And I continue to tell myself that over and over again. And I want each one of you to do the same. You couldn't wait to get started. You couldn't wait to be silver. You can't wait to get to gold. And then we just, that snowball just keeps rolling. And one thing that Brooke really taught us is be content and enthusiastic about right where you are. That was, that was that, very that powerful. Was, that was good for me too, Angie, because, you know, we, we're always saying, okay, I'm going to be diamond. I want to be, I want to be diamond. Let's not focus on diamond. Let's focus on your next step. What is your next step and how are you going to get to that next step? Because if you can't get to that next step, you're not going to be a diamond. And I think Angie and I went in, you know, we, all of us look at those diamonds and go, oh my gosh, they're diamonds. They're, you know, their life is perfect. They have no problems. <laughs> there was 80 sobbing women, folks. I mean, 80 sobbing women. We, we were all completely broken of who we, who we wanted to portray we are and we're not, you know, we, we are vulnerable. We are, we are broken. We are scarred. Each of us has 
story to tell. And unless you're willing to be vulnerable with people, nobody, nobody wants to follow somebody fake. They don't want to see this perfect person. They need somebody that's broken too. They need somebody that's got up, picked up their bootstraps, and they're, they're walking again. So we have to be real, being vulnerable with people. They need to see that. They need to know that we have been in the swamp. We've got up, we've dusted ourselves off, and we're going again. So when you look at those diamonds, look at those women as real people. They're, they're not better than you. They're not better than, they've not done anything different than you. They're where you're, you've been right now, and they're just further ahead because they've trudged through that swamp and got there. Well, and what is it they always tell us at convention is that they've got a lot more nose than the rest of us. <laughs> right, Megan? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Angie and I, I know, you know, for us, we went out there thinking, like you said, all the systems. Let me give, give me the systems. I need the systems. I need the systems. And we both walked away with, wow, didn't need the systems. I need a lot of Kleenex, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't need the systems. Your system looks different than my system. Everybody's system looks different. Um, I know for me, I, I was pretty much paralyzed. I came from the medical field. I came from nursing. I knew nothing about multi-level marketing. So honestly, I was paralyzed in fear. I was paralyzed in fear. I would come sit at my desk and there was just so much. There's so many videos you can watch. There's so many calls. There's so many of this, so many of that. And I just literally sat here froze. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't need to be here because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And one of the things that Brooke said is you have to be intentional. You don't go to bed at night until you do your 7 a.m. to your 9 p.m. at night. Every hour you schedule that day. So you don't go to bed until you do your brain dump because you get up tomorrow morning and you're going, oh, this needs done. Oh, this needs done. Oh, this needs done. As one of the gals said, there's a squirrel in this brain. This squirrel in this brain's got caffeine and I've sat up and I'm going for a ride. So I don't know about the rest of you, but that's my brain. I got the squirrel and it's saddled up and I'm going for a ride. So unless I sit down at nine and I do that brain dump, which I have started doing and I did it today and I did it yesterday. My every hour is planned out. My walk is planned in there. My prayer time is scheduled in there. My laundry is scheduled in there. Everything has to be planned out so that your mind does not stray from that and go, oh, I need to go do this. Oh, I need to go do this. You will never accomplish anything and get to where you need to be unless you schedule that time. And you say, you know what? No, nothing is going to distract me from this right now. I'm going to finish this one and go on to the next. And I think the biggest reason that she was so intentional about helping us understand mind or uh, helping us understand planning and scheduling was because she didn't do that in the beginning. And so, yes, she got all the way to, you know, she talked about how she got to diamond and she didn't have boundaries. She didn't have things planned out. And so she felt like she was every waking moment. She was like, hurry, get her phone, you know, hurry, get her phone. Oh, someone's coming. Put your phone down. Oh, I got to get my phone. And so when we started this business, at least when I did, I remember we talked about the nooks and crannies. And so in the early stages, it is easy to work it in the nooks and crannies of your day, little bits and pieces. But when you start to move up the ranks, it does take more time. And so you've heard so many people say that, well, you know, when you treat it like a business, then you're going to get paid like a business. You know, if you only expect to work, you know, 30 minutes a day, that's probably like the wages that you're going to get. Right. And so she was very um, open about how that is not the way to do it when you start moving up the ranks is to make sure that you're playing. Don't do it unplanned. Don't do it unintentionally because you need to have that time with your family. I mean, she said she felt like there was a time when her family, like they weren't really super happy about Plexus because that's all that their mom was doing or that's all that, you know, she was doing. And so she said, I was, I've turned it into making it very intentional. This last year has been life changing for her as she has planned her day. And she, she gave a lot of encouragement, like for me as a homeschool mom to say, get your, get your time in that you have to, you know, that you're going to work, get your time in that you're going to school, get your time in that, you know, this is your family time and don't mess with your phone. And I know it's not all about the phones. And my husband and I had a long talk about this last night. I'm like, I feel like I hide all the time when I get on my phone. And he's like, but that is, it is your business. Like that is where you are. But I, 
I think it's good that it helped me see I really do need boundaries and to plan things out because I can't be a squirrel. <laughs> I can't be the squirrel. <laughs> yeah, the boundaries was big for me too. Um, with mine, with the, with the Lyme disease, I have tons and tons of people daily that will reach out to me. You know, how do I do, how do I treat somebody with Lyme? What do I do with Lyme and Lyme patients themselves? And she said, is that benefiting you or is that stressing you? It's stressing me. And that's hard because it's hard. That's what, that was my, where my passion is. And that's hard for me to say, you know, and she said, you know, it's time for you to make that video. I have to make a video that says, this is my line video. If you need to direct somebody, here it is. I can't be everything for everybody as much as my heart wants to be that. I can't. Mm -hmm. It's killing me. I was Lange Ganji. My phone lived in my hand. I slept with my phone. I'd be up at two o'clock in the morning because line patients don't sleep at two o'clock in the morning. And Bill would reach over and go, what are you doing? I had no boundaries. I had to say, now I have to step back and say, no, I have boundaries or I'm going to be burnt out. And these women were all there. There were diamonds were there because they were burnt out. We cannot burn ourselves out this early in the game. So we have to place those boundaries. Um, another thing she had mentioned was owning your voice. You know, own your voice. How are you coming across? Are you wah, 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 sign up. It's great stuff. Or are you going, hey, I got this. You want this. I feel great. You can feel great. Own your voice. You are your own business card. If you can't be your business card, you can't sell anything. Yeah. And she talked a lot about your, I mean, appearance to, to a degree of when, when you look at yourself as your own business card, do you look happy? Do you have a smile on your face? You know, not that you can't go out in your workout clothes and a ponytail. Cause that's like my life. <laughs> but, um, Still, she's like, the way that you portray yourself, that's what people see more so than you handing them a business card. And that, that was, that was really good. I think I got um, seven points here. So if you've got paper and pen, um, write these down. Um, she talked about your mind, your mind, book didn't talk about, this is Tiffany Peterson. So, um, you can Google T Tiffany Peterson. She's worked for major corporations. She does cleaning like Jack Canfield, um, she does a lot of their training for their employees. So these are seven strategies strategies to manifest your desires. Your mind must arrive at your destination before your life does. The number one was develop a solid success mindset. It's the lens of life. So you, first you gotta develop that successful mindset. If you can't see where you're going, you're never gonna arrive there. Number two is setting a clear vision. You have to have clarity. If you don't have clarity and how you're going to get there and what you're going to do to get there, you can't, you can't, you can't get the vision. You can't, everything's foggy. You have to clearly see how I'm going to get there and what I'm going to do. Number three is decide, declare, and claim. It's a choice. The choice is ours. Are we going to declare this and are we going to claim it to get there? Number four, prepare for it to arrive. Preparation. These women were telling us, you know, they thought, oh, if I get to diamond, if I just get the diamond, if I just get the diamond, they got to diamond and some of their lives were falling apart. You know, we have to mentally prepare ourselves for that. Okay, when I get to diamond, am I going to be working myself so much that, I, that I'm burnt out and then I'm killing myself? Or I'm going to prepare my mind now and say, no, those two hours a day are blocked for my children. Those two hours a day are blocked for my grandchildren. So preparation. Number five, act as if. So embody it. Leadership is a choice, not a position. You have to position yourself and say, okay, I'm going to act this way. and I'm going to embody it. It's going to be part of who I am. Number six, be generous in giving. Giving back. We have to be givers. Brooke did not build a double diamond team for a business. Brooke said, this isn't about plexus. This is about loving people and loving people well. That is what we are here for, guys. I know it feels good to sign somebody up. It feels good for me too. But unless we're loving them and investing in them, that's really why they came to us. That's how we can be different than any other company out there. And number seven is everything is energy. Alignment, getting yourself aligned. Make sure I'm centered in my faith. Make sure I'm centered in the Lord. Um, I listened to a sermon earlier this week. 
and he would talk about, you know, Joshua, when, when God said for Joshua to walk around the walls of Jericho, he said, but nothing's going to happen until the seventh time. So every day they walked around those walls, nothing happened, nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing happening, nothing happening. And it wasn't until the seventh day and they walked around and the walls fell. Every day, what you're doing is adding up. It's the walls are going to fall. Be consistent. Kind of like we talk about the 90 day rule, like what we do now, like we see the effects of that 90 days down the road. It doesn't always happen like right now, just because we talk to someone or we share with someone or, you know, we moved to a new neighborhood and I had a couple people want to know what, what, what is it you're sharing all over Facebook or whatever. And I'm thinking, you know, they want samples and blah, blah, blah. Well, then they don't even try the samples, but who knows? Because I haven't had a chance to build a relationship with them. Like I'm living here, but I'm not here very often. So I haven't had that opportunity to build the relationship. And that's everybody that was there talked about mindset, relationship, and getting all of that like aligned together because those things are so crucial. Um, that What was Tiffany's last name? I forget. Peterson. Peterson. She was amazing. Yeah. I love, I love everything that she shared. Um, so anyway. I like, uh, Megan. So if you listen to Bob Heilig, if you're in Bob Heilig's Leadership Academy, Megan is his um, go-to gal. She does all of his work. She does a lot of stuff. Um, we'll put her, her name in the comments and you can, Go watch some of her YouTube videos, but she be, she began the whole session and she literally had us all bawling. <laughs> so what she talked about was the way we react to people, you know. So something in our childhood was whether we were told I'm not good enough, um, I don't I don't live up to, or or you know the down the down things that somebody spoke into you as a child. When you react to a situation, you're reacting from that child standpoint. And we have to take control of that. We have to take control of that child. For me, it was a nine-year-old child. Um, I was abused as a child um, sexually by a neighbor. So my mind goes back to that nine-year-old child. And I didn't want anybody to see that child. So I had to now, now speak to that child, the way I respond to people, the way I respond to my husband when we get in an argument, the way I respond to anything is I got to sit, tell my little child, which she made us name it, my little Sally, no, Sally, I got this. I got this. I don't need you to speak for me. I'm an adult, I'm in control, and I can speak for myself. So somewhere in you, wherever that hurt began, you have to go back, give that child a name so that you can say, no, I've got this. I've got this and I can do this on my own. Yeah, she really pulled a lot of stuff out of people. (laughs) Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to touch on real quick too, was when Brooke was talking about time freedom and she, she just, I won't say it as eloquently as she did, but one of the things that she said, and Tammy, you might know exactly the way she said it, but she said, you know, um, if you want to work 40 hours a week or 40 year, 40 hours a week, nine to five, like for 30 years, you're probably still not going to have time freedom. But the beautiful thing about network marketing, having residual income starting and working up to that is that most people can do that in like five or six years as opposed to 30 or 40 years at a nine to five job. So she was just like, you know, don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen for you in a year or in two years, like it does for some people. It's okay if it takes you, she's like, it's okay if it takes you 10 years because 10 years is a whole lot better than 30 or 40 years working a nine to five job where you're totally at someone else's beck and call. And there was something else, I can't remember exactly how they said it, but it was something to the effect of, you can either, you know, work for your, work for your dream or you can work for somebody else's dream. I can't remember exactly how she said that, but I was like, wow, that's so true because, you know, when we go out and work for someone else, we're, we're helping supply their dream, not our own dream. So that's one of the beautiful things about network marketing, right? Is that we can do what we want with it and the sky's the limit. Right. I, the, the renew the, the vow of my dream. I wrote that down was renew the vow of my dream. Because I think that, I think we forget our dream along the way. We get so busy in the everyday work of this, you know, what we have to do, what we have to do, what we have to do. That we the dream. What what is my dream? 
what was my dream time freedom? If my dream is time freedom and I'm spending 12 and 14 hours at this desk every day, which I was prior to this, I'm not living my dream. That wasn't the dream I said I wanted with this. I can go, I can go back to the hospital for 12 and 13 hour shifts. If I'm not allowing myself the time freedom, then I'm going to be burned out here. I'm going to be going back to work going to heck with that stuff. I don't want that. And we can't sell that to somebody. If they see that you're at your desk 10, 12 hours a day, they're like, I don't want, I don't want to work for that company. I don't want to spend 12, 14 hours a day working. So I have to myself refocus and say, okay, I'm going to make time for me. And I'm going to let those people around me see that I'm enjoying my day and my time and freedom with this. So I am readjusting a lot in my life because of what I have learned out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We wish we could just tell you guys everything. I mean, it was just, <laughs> we literally started every morning at nine and didn't finish till after 10 every night. So, I mean, if we just poured everything out, it was just, there's just too much. There's just too much. Well, the truth is we really started before nine because um, like from seven to eight every morning, we would be up and we would be having coffee. We'd be praying with people. We'd be talking over people just getting to know people. Then we would go right into either workouts or yoga. There was amazing food. She had chefs brought in that cooked everything from scratch. It was crazy, amazing, delicious food. Then we would have our session. So her whole thought behind it is, you know, you're going to build great relationships, the spiritual, the mental, the physical, and like the, what we're putting into our bodies. Like if you have all those things as a great package, then you're going to be happier. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, obviously for me, it's like the Lord starts all that. Um, but one of the things I've been doing on my customer page is I've been helping people with like water challenges or food, you know, food challenges, not necessarily dieting, but trying to help people make healthier choices and making sure, you know, helping people, encouraging them to keep their bodies moving and get working. And so Plexus comes into play with a lot of that, right? So aligning all those things together, I think was her main goal in helping people have a great balance. So it was well worth every penny that I spent to get there. And I hope That's she does it again because <laughs> I'm going back. <laughs> That's what I was going to make sure I mentioned too. If you do nothing else, I mean, the leadership, leadership retreat is awesome. I mean, I've only been on Plexus for a year and a half, but so it's going to be my second one. And it was awesome last year. But if you're going to put apples, apples, and oranges, oranges, I'm telling you what, this was cake and ice cream. <laughs> because, I mean, what we get at Leaders Retreat is phenomenal, but what we received there was so much meat. It was just so much. And like, like Angie said, the relationships that we formed, just the feeling of community, the feeling of faith. We started every session with a prayer. I mean, the faith there was just tangible. I mean, the people that came to serve us, they were not Plexus people that were there, but they said the energy that they could feel just because of the women that were in the room, the faith that was in that room. Um, I was going to say something else too. Oh, so this is open to senior rubies and above. If you make no other effort to do anything next year, you start, you start shooting for this goal right now. I mean, this, this is something you need to invest your time and energy into getting to. This will build you on anything that you've been built uh, with before. Girls, thanks so much for sharing. What Did you have a top or most favorite memory of the week? Or a favorite moment? I, it's kind of, for me, oh, we ended up with Christy, Christy Jax. I didn't know any of these people. So Christy Jax is under um, Brooke. Christy Jax, three years ago, was losing a marriage. She had a, an addicted husband and was punching holes in the doors. And they were about to file for bankruptcy. So it was at the lowest time of their life when they started Plexus. They ended up becoming a diamond family, her and her husband both. They are now the happiest couple and living life to their dreams. That night was our last night. I went up to my, my bunk. I had won the bunk house up on the old tower. I went up there and I had not listened to Stephen Furtick this week. I usually listen to Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church. I laid in the bed. It was midnight and I turned that on and his sermon was about playing small and exactly everything to the T of what we covered in the whole week. I sat in that bed and cried till 2 a.m. in the morning. So for me, 
it was God just saying, and in, in Stephen Furtick's message, he says, God's got one more miracle and he wants to do it in you. I, I think if I had to tell you anything, God's got a miracle for you. You just have to be obedient and say, okay, Lord, I'm ready to receive. For me, it was um, the relationships. Like I'm a people person and the, the opportunity that I had to meet new people. And I know this is going to sound kind of funny because I'm a super red personality and I'm just like, I'm very driven, but I'm kind of, I kind of have this introverted personality to where I don't just go up to people that I don't know. And honestly, when I found out Tammy and I weren't rooming together, I was like, Oh my word, what am I going to do? I was, I was like, ah. but the opportunity that God gave me to spend time with some very godly women who prayed over me, who prayed with me, who shared things that there was about, there was about three women that literally I did not know. Like one of them I'd, I'd heard of, but the others I didn't know. And they just poured into me. They were older, older women than me. And it was such a blessing. It just blessed my heart so much. So I took away so many great things, but that, that was awesome for me so I think I just have one more thing to add Megan before you guys take over um if you can't be on the call tomorrow night with Preston Pugmire you're gonna miss it he is phenomenal he he is ready to build into you he's gonna talk a lot about what we talked about out there so be on that call tomorrow important can you remind everyone about what that is is that his paid for membership or is that something that else his, that was his uh, mindset makeover is it so, still open to join it's open to join, and I'm sure he'll probably do, be doing a special tomorrow. Okay. So anybody that was in it before, like I was in his Mindset Makeover class, um, it was two sessions a week. It was Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you got two sessions a week. Um, for anybody that was in that before, he's given a very special deal to come back and do it again. And he works with you as a group, and he asked you, well, if you've not listened to Preston Pogmeyer, he will call you out on your limiting mindset and your claim small. Awesome. Yeah, that's good stuff. I love what you said about time and the boundaries. I think that's so important. It's a, it's a, it sounds simple, but it's really hard. Yeah. And it's something that I've really been, um, my coach has really been helping me with that lately. So it's been the, everything that you guys have mentioning that you learned this um, the, at this event is exactly what my coach is teaching me. Even the nine-year-old boy subconscious reaction to things he's drawn out of me um and it's really helped me in so many different areas of life so i, I love what i'm hearing uh, from you guys and one thing i would say if you haven't signed up for uh, an event of some sort it doesn't even have to be a plexus event some sort of personal growth type event where you're trying to grow yourself and learn mm -hmm. more look for one because I'm convinced I'm, I love reading. I think reading books is extremely important, but a live event like a two or three day event can be worth five years of reading books. You can streamline so much personal growth in two or three days by going to a live event. So be looking for some, I've done a couple this year. I've gone to some events um, and they've just challenged me to grow being around people that, I want to grow, want to learn, want to become more. And it's been, they've been huge for us. Mm -hmm. um, I have another one coming up two days after we get home from the Emerald Extravaganza. I'm on a plane to another event. So um, I don't know what it is. It's called <laughs> Warrior Dad. I got invited to go do a documentary called Warrior Dad, and I have no idea what it is. It's on a mountain in California. Wow. So I don't even know. I'll let you know as soon It'll as I get adventure. But I thought, wow, this could be cool. So, um, but I'm looking to learn. I'm looking to grow because I have not yet become all that I want to be in light of Plexus. I've not yet hit my goals. I have not yet become everything I want to be as a husband. I have not yet become everything I want to be as a dad. I have not become everything I want to be as a triathlete, as whatever, you know, I have not yet arrived in any of those areas. I have so many more things to learn. So I need to be around and get around people 
who are going to encourage me to keep moving forward, to keep learning, to keep pushing forward. So um, that's one thing I want to say about the events. And one thing too is I, I mentioned that I have a coach. Um, he's more than just like a business coach. He's kind of like a life coach. Mm -hmm. He's pretty awesome. His name's Carl. But anyway, he's incredible. And I really struggled with, um, and maybe it's just a guy thing. Maybe it's a pride thing. Um, you know, I'm not sure, but I really struggled with the idea of having a coach. Um, because I didn't, one of the biggest things was, is I didn't want people to know that I don't have it all figured out. That was one of the biggest things that helped me <laughs> that, you know, and, but I don't have it all figured out and it's okay. Um, so I would just encourage you, you don't have to have a coach or a counselor or any, but somebody who's going to challenge you, somebody who is going to point you to higher ground, someone who's going to challenge you to keep moving forward. Um, I think it's extremely important. It's one of the best investments I've ever made and I've never even met him um, in person. I'll meet him on a mountain in California sometime this month. So, um, so anyway, don't let pride stand in the way of finding someone to help you along in this journey. We've been created to be in relationships. Um, so we should be in good ones. So find someone who's going to encourage you to keep moving. One thing also I've been, it's been on my mind lately. I'm just going to share you just some of the things that I'm learning. Um, very quickly. I know August is a strange month usually in Plexus because people are finishing vacations. People are getting ready, you know, going back to school. It's just kind of an odd month. So we got August out of the way. The leaders retreat contest is done. Um, all the contests are done for now. So one thing I wanted to encourage you with is maybe you hit all of your goals in August. Maybe you didn't. Regardless, I have the same encouragement, regardless of what you did or didn't do with your goals in August. And that is this. It's something that's been on my mind out of Philippians chapter 3 for the last several weeks. And the apostle, this is what the apostle Paul says. This is just a principle that we can apply to our plexus business. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, meaning I have not yet apprehended what I'm pushing forward pushing towards. I haven't yet got there. Um, now, if the Apostle Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, is going to say, yeah, I haven't quite got there yet, then I probably haven't quite got there yet either in most of the areas of my life. But he says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I think that this principle, we can apply this to our plexus business because I don't know what, I don't know what August was like for you. I know what it was like for some of you through coaching calls and just looking at things, but I'm not sure where it is. But one thing I would encourage you to do, don't, don't not learn lessons from August, but forget Forget, forget those things that are behind and keep moving forward. Keep, don't settle. One of the greatest things we face, one of the most um, difficult things we face is comfort. And it's amazing what we can get comfortable with. We can get comfortable with success. We can also get comfortable with failure. We can get comfortable <laughs> with lies. We can get comfortable with, it's, in, it's insane what we can call normal or what we can get comfortable with. But what I would encourage you with is forget those things that are behind. Even if you're a diamond, forget those things. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit my up line. But <laughs> help with my hand sometimes I get excited. But uh, sorry, I just know I just lost my concentration. But you have to, you know, you can't, we're either going up or we're going down. There is no stagnant level in life. So we need to forget those things that are behind and we need to press forward. We need to keep moving forward. So wherever you're at in your plexus business, just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. We haven't. We have not yet arrived yet. We still have lots to learn. Your mantra. And uh, what's that? Confront comfort. Confront like, comfort. How about that? <laughs> Confront comfort. 
How about that one? You can quote that one. That's a Carl quote. I like it. Confront comfort. So anyway, that's all I have. So uh, I'm excited about the fall. It's going to be an awesome end of the year. I have mm -hmm. a feeling that a lot of good things are yet ahead uh, for this team. So it's exciting to see what's going to happen. Yeah. And I think I love whoever either Angie or Tammy that was talking about energy. Like it's all about the energy. What was that quote? Um, because it, if we're not acting out of passion and excitement and like enthusiasm, mm -hmm. like we're not going to attract that to ourselves or our businesses. And like how awesome for this team to be the most enthusiastic, energetic, um, like givers to people. Like we have to exude energy to engage people, right? Whether we're in person, meeting new people, sharing on Facebook, like whatever the thing is, like you can, you can build a business off pure excitement and enthusiasm, even if your knowledge is like not that high. Like I feel like in the beginning, I was just sharing out of complete passion. I didn't really know what I was doing, except that I knew other people need what I had. Right. Um, but if I didn't know the answer, it was okay. Like most of the people I was talking to on messenger or text anyways, so I could go look up the answer or find it out and then get back with them. Right. And there is no failure. It's all learning. And that's something I've been reminding myself, my kids, my mom, mm -hmm. I mentioned that to her today or the other day. Yeah. It's all learning. Well, yeah. We either, <laughs> either win or you learn. There really is no losing unless you don't learn. Or if you don't quit. learn your lessons or if you quit. So, I mean, we either win or we learn. I just ran in a race a few weeks ago in a national championship, and I really was thinking pretty highly of myself until I went there, and I got my butt kicked really, really bad. Um, and But I didn't lose. I learned. I learned a lot from that lesson. So it was a good thing. It was any time we can learn, you know, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um also there yeah there is so much truth shared renew the vow of your dream like that's like that in and of itself like even if you just said that amen <laughs> everyone leaves and you can go process that i think i think sometimes we get such a limited vision of the opportunity like every single person on this call there's 35 people on i think there's 44 at one point Every single, single one of us has a sphere of influence um, in, a, in a realm that we're able to engage. And like to think about like not just Plexus, but just like you all as people have gifts to share with the world. Like Tammy and Angie are both saying like we live in a dark world and we get to be the light, right? And I know, I mean, this is a little bit of <laughs> my personal faith, but um Jesus ministered to people's physical health before he ever ministered to their spiritual health. So in my, this is just my mindset about like the gift that Plexus is. It's anything that in, helps us engage with people is a win because it's an opportunity to share your faith, share, you know, what's, what's blessed your life to share all those things. So, oops, there's people still popping in the call. Okay. Um, I did want to share really quick um, a couple of things. There are awesome incentives. Do you guys all see that? I just um, put it out on the team page. I meant to put it out earlier, but um, if you're kind of, if your mind is reeling because of all of the, <laughs> all of the things, you know, shout outs and people earning leaders retreat and all the things, there are fabulous incentives. The starfish necklace for Joyome is still a thing. So what I did at the end of August is I blitzed through a gob of my wholesale people and just told them about the incentive. Like, hey, just let me know if you want to try Joyome. It's my mom's favorite Plexus product. Um, you can help support that, that um, whatever, charity type thing. Um, there's a 369 incentive running. So kind of like what we did in the spring. Okay, those Maui gifts are fabulous. I have a pair of the Olukai sandals. Amazing. Um, I don't remember what else there is. Sunglasses. Yeah, go check those out. Flip-flops, tennis shoes. Um, super fun. Ray-Bans. There's a bunch of incentives there, okay? And then, um, did you guys see that fun little Hello Happy um, box for Sip and Seas? You can buy and you get, like, PV for it. And so they're gifting. If you host, um, if you co-host or host a Sip and <coughs> and add a combo of three ambassadors or customers, 
you get a fun little blend jet. So they're <coughs> basically incentivizing us to do the things, to work our businesses. Um, and there's, you know, the 130 PV subscription. So there's that free shipping promo for that. Same with customers. So there's a lot of opportunities to reach out to your existing team, your customers, your ambassadors, just letting them know what the incentives are and, and hopefully generate, you know, some conversation there, maybe helping people get restarted. August can be a strange month. So if your points are not reflective of your rank, it's okay. Okay. Um, a lot of people were added in July and maybe didn't reorder in August or they bumped their subscription out. Help them plug in in September. It is so important. I feel like we're really good at follow-up in the first month. Um, speaking of which, if you do not have a system for follow-up, get out your calendar and write your people in every Friday, follow-up Friday. Just write how, who your new ambassadors are so you make sure that you have a system for following up with them. Because if you've done that, you have done your job as an ambassador. But I feel like, and I was just talking to Melinda about this, sometimes it's between that second and third month that we lose people. And so that was, a, I just wrote it down because I'm learning <laughs> with y'all. Um, sometimes I feel like maybe we, we, we dropped the ball in terms of follow-up in that second month. And maybe that's, maybe that's a time where we send a little handwritten note Oh, Tammy, you want to pop on and say something? Oops. Yeah, one of the things she, she had mentioned is what, what do we say if they quit? People don't quit just to quit. We need to dig deeper. There's something either going on in their relationship, there's something going on in their marriage, there's something going on in their health. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not quitting us, so don't take that personally. Dig deeper, find out what's going on in their life. They need you to be invested in that. Yeah, that's really true, and I've told people that before. Is like, just because someone stops you or, or maybe is crabby towards you or whatever, it's not plexus. It's probably some underlying thing. And you're just the point person that gets to listen to, <laughs> to the venting. So I agree with that. And it does stem back to relationship. But Melinda and I were talking about, you know what, maybe the 60 day mark is when we send out a little care package. Instead of sending it initially when they join, maybe we bump it out and at that 60 day mark or that 45 day mark, we send them a little gifty pack, cute little bubble mailer with a stick of active and a stick of the opposite slim and a little handwritten note and a flyer, right? Thanking them for being on our wellness team and whatever. And that's something that I wrote specific new ambassador names down and customer names from the beginning of the year because I have consistent customers that'll order every month, every other month. So it's it will be beneficial <laughs> to go back through those people. And so I'm just sharing my ideas of what I'm doing. I'm creating gratitude packages for those people. Um, and then I'm also going to do a sampler search. And I did share about this on the Leaders Retreat Accountability Group, but you can go into Messenger. This is a, a godsend. You can go into Messenger and type in a keyword, a like sample. <laughs> How many samples have you sent and you have not followed up or signed up anyone or a lot of those people? I have so many people that I can close huge area of potential that I just wrote it on my list. I'm like, you know what? I'm blitzing through all of those people. You know, I have friends from college, just different people I've gifted free plexus and then, but have neglected my end of the gig, right. To follow up with them. Um, so also I'll just say as a little reminder, don't forget to shout out your people. I was on some coaching calls earlier today and um, one of the girls and I were chatting about recognition recognition is free and every single person digs it. Like it is so valuable and important to do that. Um, I'll shout out Cassie Johnson. I don't know if she's on tonight, <laughs> but she is, I mean, there's so many of you crazy, amazing people that shout out your people, but she's one that I see her team page stuff pop up in my newsfeed. And she shouts out consistently every month for top PV people and her top enrollers. And so, um, Kat, shout out to Cassie for that because I see her doing that and I know her people feel so valued. Um, by doing that. And so that's an, an easy thing to do. And sometimes I do private ones. Like if I see different people adding level ones, they come through my email, I send them a little voice message or a little private message. Hey, congrats on the new ambassador. And sometimes you shout them out publicly. I mean, public shout out actually is a hundred times more valuable <laughs> and more effective. So I just wanted to mention that really quick. Um, there is a new ambassador training. Um, my sweet assistant, she's awesome. I was thinking it would be 8.30 a.m., <laughs> But she made the graphic for PM, which is totally fine. So I'll pop on the team page and do a new ambassador orientation. If you have new people, it's just something that I started at the top of every, every month. I just pop on and do that new ambassador orientation so people can just get a general basic overview. 
quick blitz and you can plug them into that. So feel free. I always do a giveaway on there too. So tag them in the comments <clears throat> so they see that. Um, also, if you have a team page, I would just challenge you to also duplicate that because it's highly duplicatable and your people track with you more than they track with me. So um, that's a little quick tip. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I had written down. Um, the Actively Balanced Challenge group is going awesome. There's a ton of engagement. So if you're not active in that, make sure you do that. It's in the Learning Center Tribe group. You can search by hashtag, hashtag Actively Balanced, um, and find the, find the posts from that. Encourage your people to pop in. It's just basic stuff like Angie was saying. Helping people drink their water. Help them commit to exercise. Just help, helping us all stay committed to the healthy habits, right? Because we want to be representing what we're selling, what we're sharing, in terms of health and wellness and things like that. So it's going to be a great month, you guys. Um, just as a reminder, you know, reset the goals, write them down, um, because you're going to be way more likely to hit your goals when you, when you write them down. So there's a, it's a good month. There's a lot planned. Um, there's a happy half hour and then our product and business blitz later on in the month. So feel free to plug people in. I don't schedule those things to be overwhelming, but just to always offer something every week that you can plug people into. So it's a constant little, Hey, we're having a little event this week. <laughs> you know, so you have something to invite people to. So y'all thank you for popping on. Anything else you want to say really quick? Uh, just one thing, just another thing I've been thinking of is that just however you finished in August, uh, whether that was on good, bad, wherever you finish in August, I just want to let you know that however you finished in August, it doesn't define you. But what you do now, mm -hmm. what you do three days later, now what you do with that, that's what will define you. That's, that's the stuff that character is made of, and that's where discipline comes in. So um, just like I was saying earlier, just keep moving forward and, um, you know, Keep moving forward. All right. You guys have a great night. Thanks for popping on. All right. Let's see. See you guys. All right. Bye.